What's up guys, Big Bad Wolf here. I hope this video finds you all doing well today. Um, I have a topic that I want to cover today that I feel like is something that gets grazed over quite a bit or is something that people take for granted a lot and escape from Tarkov, and that is good squad communication, okay? Now, if you're a solo player, don't tune out just yet. I think that these tips uh, are going to be helpful to you as well because it's going to show you ways that you can um, recognize when a squad is, is communicating poorly um, or how to maybe confuse them and get the upper hand in these gunfights. So whether you're playing as a squad and you're looking to better your communication um, or you're a solo player and you're looking for opportunities or ways that you can beat squads, I think that this is going to be beneficial for both sides. So um, I have some things, like I said, some points that I want to cover today that I've lined up and uh, you really could go in, go on and on and on about squad communication and different ways to do it. These are just some ways that I've found really helpful in my squad play and that has really helped uh, my squad get better at, at winning gunfights because um, running a squad in, in Escape from Tarkov, it's a lot, there's a lot more to it than you think. It's not like Call of Duty where you just jump in with your teammate and you run and gun. And that's what I think a lot of new players forget is that there is no HUD in, in Escape from Tarkov. Zero HUD. So there's no way to identify whether your teammate is a teammate or he is an enemy. So you really have to put a lot of thought into communicating effectively to your teammates and looking for maybe some distinct characteristics that you can identify on your on your team so you don't end up shooting them. Because um, without these things, if you're not communicating effectively as a squad... Running a squad can actually be to your disadvantage. Um, and what I mean by that is if you have to hesitate every time you see somebody and try to identify whether that's your, your teammate or not, that can lose you a lot of gunfights, that hesitation. And solo players, if you're watching, that's a way that you have a big advantage on some squads that are effect or, or, uh, communicating poorly is you don't have that hesitation. You don't have to think about when you sight that guy up, whether that's your teammate or not. So you have th this advantage to where you can just point and shoot. Um, so squad players, you need to recognize this when you're running into solo players is that if you're not effectively communicating, you're putting yourself at a disadvantage because now you're going to have to hesitate when you see a guy to identify whether that's a friend or, or foe, friend or foe, friend or enemy. Um, so again, like I said, that that's one way that a squad can be... Um, to your disadvantage when you're playing with them. And another way is obviously team killing. So if you're not communicating effectively and you find yourself dying to your teammate a lot, well, I think that these are going to be helpful to you as well. Um, so like I said, let's jump into this list. I have some things I wanted to cover today. There's a million points that you could cover on this topic. So, you know, they're obviously not all going to be here. Um, and I really am curious on, on maybe some, some pointers that you guys have that you found useful in your squad play. So feel free to drop those down in the comments section. Um, but the first point I wanted to cover, and this is going to sound kind of like, duh, um, and that is just paying attention to what your squad's wearing. Okay. And what gear your squad's bringing in is your squad mates. Are they using gear? That's, that's easy to identify. Are they running killer armor? Um, are they using, are they using a DVL, you know, a bright green rifle that you can pick out in a gunfight? Um, so pay attention to this when you're in that intermission phase, when you're inviting your teammates and you're waiting to load into a raid, take a look at what they're wearing. Look at for distinct things that you can pick out. Um, granted, this isn't foolproof, so you can't rely on this hundred percent because there's the chance that an enemy would be running the same gear, but it, it is very helpful. You know, if, if you pick these out and you know, if you've got heavily geared teammates and you run into a guy that's lightly geared and running a scav BP, you know, you should be able to pick him out right away. Um, helmets, this is a good way to identify too. What kind of helmet is your teammate wearing? Um, so again, like I said, I, this sounds like something that would be really intuitive, but not everyone does. Um, or maybe you, you know, maybe a squad loaded into the raid and they're like, ah, shoot, I forgot to take a look at what you were wearing or they don't really pay attention. Solo players, this is an opportunity for you to jump in. If you, if you notice a squad member, um, you run into a squad and you notice you're running the same gear. That's not going to win you the gunfight, but just know that, you know, that's it's going to be confusing for them to call out. So, um, like I said, this is something that is is very important. All right. So this next tip is going to contradict almost directly with what I just said, um, but it's for good reason. OK, 
and that is that I strongly recommend against wearing the armbands, all right? With the new update, they've made the armbands, if they're in their armband slot, they stay permanently on you. You can't lose them when you die um, unless you took it off and threw it in your bag. So there's been a huge increase in popularity of these armbands, a lot of people wearing them, um, and I really, really do recommend against them, and, and here is why, okay? First of all, these armbands are bright colors, okay? You've got red, you've got yellow, you got white, green, purple if it's Twitch Rivals, or bright pink almost. Um, and these colors stand out, okay? When you're running a map like Woods and you're trying to be stealthy or you're trying to set up in a sniper spot and you have a red armband on, there's nothing really that that is going to match with on Woods. So that armband is going to stand out if someone is scoping you out. Okay, and I'm, and I'm saying this from firsthand experience, okay, when I was doing Shooter Born in Heaven on Woods, I was running a voodoo site most of the time, and there was a raid in particular where a guy I shot and missed at ran, and I lost sight of him, but he ended up running into a bush, okay, and he was at the front of the bush trying to find me, but because he had a red armband on, I was able to pick that armband out when I scanned over the bush with my scope, okay, had he not had that armband on, it would have been a lot harder for me to see him squatting in that bush. Um, so, like I said, that that's just one instance where you know I've I've seen the people with the armbands and and they really they don't help your your camouflage. Um, so that's that's one reason I I recommend against the armbands. Second is is if you become strictly reliant upon the armband to identify your teammates and then you run into a squad that's also running the same color armband. That's going to create a lot of confusion in the communication between you um, and your teammates, um, and it's going to make it a lot harder to identify, you know, which one of these guys is your your teammates and which one of these guys is not. Um, so, like I said, I, I really do recommend against the armbands. If you if you use them and you and your squad are loving them and you've found great success with them, obviously keep doing what works for you. Um, this is just me speaking from my point of view and my experience. So, again, I really recommend against the armbands. Okay, so this next tip I think is the most important tip that I can give, um, and it's sort of a three-part tip, all right? So for the first part of it, it is try to keep your teammates within your line of sight the best you can, all right? And what I mean by line of sight is I don't necessarily mean you have to see them, but if you were to take your character and do a 360, would you be able to see them, all right? That's what I mean by line of sight. So if you can keep them within that 360 radius and be able to see where they are, um, that's going to help you a lot. That's going to allow you guys to react quickly if an enemy pops up because you're going to know where your teammate is exactly. Um, and so, like I said, that's going to help out. That's also going to help if you do get into a gunfight, you're going to know which teammate's going to be able to help you the most in that scenario. Um, so, like I said, this is this is really useful is to keep your teammates within that 360 view. Um, but my next part of this tip is that that's not always ideal. There's some situations where, you know, maybe you want to go for a flank. Um, or like, for example, that my, me and my teammate, we like to split up on dorms. Okay. So when we get to dorms, he might enter in on second floor and I'll enter in on third floor. All right. And we'll kind of, we're, we'll kind of go for the top down and we'll look to, to see if there's any squads and clear both levels at the same time. The way we communicate this is as soon as we get in, we're going to communicate what room we go into. All right. So if he enters in on second he goes right to bathroom usually. He's going to call out second floor. Ba I'm on second floor bathroom. I might do the same on third floor. Go in, go right to the bathroom. I'll say I'm on third story uh, bathroom. At that point, it's very important that we communicate each of our movements, okay? Like every last one of them. <clears throat> and I think that this is where a lot of squads kind of fall off on their communication is they communicate that initial entrance. You know, they communicate that they're in the bathrooms, but then they stop there, all right? And then they start pushing up and doing their own thing on their floors. And then one of them goes to meet with the other teammate without calling it out. And then they end up getting team killed because the teammate wasn't ready for the teammate to come up the stairwell. So it's very, very important that not only so you don't team kill, but also so that you guys can react quickly if you do run into an enemy. Okay, So if he calls out that he's on second story bathroom and then he moves up to the bed on second story and he says, hey, I'm at the bed on second story. If a guy pops out of the stairwell, I know it's not him, all right? Because he just told me he's at the bed on second story. And not only do I know it's not him, but I can use my teammate now 
to pinch this guy in stairwell if we decide to to fight him okay and that's why this communication like this this step-by-step -step communication is really important all right so if if there's nobody there we determine that both of our levels are clear i'm gonna let him know you know hey coming down the stairwell to meet you coming down the stairwell I'm going to all the way up until I see him, I'm going to call out just to make sure he doesn't shoot me. And just to make sure that if he does see someone and I, you know, it's not where I'm calling out, he knows it's not me. Um, so like I said, in this scenario, if I'm coming down the stairwell, I'll let him know I'm coming down, I'm coming down. This is me peeking the hallway. And then once we've seen each other, then we can go back to looting and doing our thing because now we have line of sight on each other. So um, again, when you break that line of sight, it's really important that you communicate each step you make. Um, so like I said, keep that in mind. The next thing and the next part of this tip is to recognize when you're in a situation where it's going to be hard to call out your specific location. So maps like woods, for example, if you're on the new area of woods, there it's really hard to give a solid locational call out on that on that those areas okay because you're not gonna be able to say anything other than i'm next to a tree or i'm in a bush like on a rock like these things are not these <laughs> these are not really great locational call outs okay and you're not gonna be able to be super specific with them just because it's all trees and woods um so knowing and recognizing these situations make it even more important that you guys stay closer together all right until you've come to a point where you can break off and know that you can give a great locational call out. So, um, you know, if you're going towards the, the Sturman's Bowl and you're heading that way, it's best if you two stick closer together and you keep eyes on each other. That way, if a guy does pop out, you're ready to fight him right away and you don't have to hesitate to guess if it's your teammate or not. And then when you get to Sturman's Bowl, if you guys are, you know, you've got wood piles, you've got trucks, you've got a few different call outs that you can give is to locational spots. So um, that's really important is to to recognize where you are and whether you're going to be able, be able to communicate your location to your teammate or not. Um, and if you can't and you feel like it, you're going to struggle communicating that to them, then it's best to stay closer together so that way you guys know and you can see each other. Um, that, that one's a big tip. So, all right, guys. So that concludes... Um, I guess the tips that I have for you guys and just some big things that I feel like I wish I would have known coming into Escape from Tarkov um, because it really is tough in the beginning. Getting to learn, you know, how to keep tabs on your teammates um, and how to how to best identify your teammates and the call outs to give. It's a lot, especially when you're a new player and you're learning the maps at the same time. Um, you're learning just the whole system of the game. It's it's really really can be overwhelming in the beginning and the last thing you want to have to worry about is killing your teammates so um, again these are some tips I wish I had solo players use these if you see squads that are come together and they split up big time recognize that that is that is big for you if that's not a coordinated split and they're on a map like woods recognize that you can now pursue one of them and it's going to be really hard for the other one to give a solid call out of where they are um, so this is, this is going to be a great benefit to you. Um, and get, again, guys, if you have some other tips that you want to throw down below, I will be happy to, to hear them and to share with everyone else. Um, this is really, this is really important because the Tarkov community, we really are a community and it's up to us to help, um, kind of create this on-ramp for newer players because you know, as you guys know, there, there's no formal tutorial to the game. So it's hard to learn in the beginning, but it's a really fun game once you do get it down and it's, it's really exciting. Um, and this is one of the ways that you can improve your gameplay and your squad play and, and really get the full advantage of, of coming in as a squad. So, um, I hope you guys like this video. I hope it's able to help you guys out. Um, please like, and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you guys next time.